What's up guys? Got another video review for you. This time we're taking a look at G1 Headmaster Skull Cruncher. Uh, so this guy was one of the uh, four, three main uh, Decepticon Headmasters. Him, um, Weird Wolf, and Mindwipe. I was going to say Fangry, but he's a Headmaster Junior. I was getting confused. Um, the Autobots being uh, Chrome Dome, who already saw a hardhead, um, who I recently acquired with him, same time. Um, Chrome Dome, hardhead, Brainmaster, and Highbrow. Um, I thought I had Brainmaster, I actually don't, so I'm actually on the hunt for one, but maybe next month. So, yeah, so this guy actually only came with this sticker on both sides. Uh, I, they were horrible. So, I actually just went ahead and cleaned those off, and I put some minty fresh. Uh, repro labels on here, so the label, the uh, stickers on here look really great. So that out of the way, uh, what we have here is Skull Cruncher. He is an alligator, as you can see. The Decepticon Headmasters were all animals, um, even in Super God Master Force. They're demons, and the Autobots are you know vehicles. So that's one weird thing. So this guy is obviously an alligator. He's got this weird pink and green color scheme going on him, going for him. Uh, check out all this. I just put the stickers on yes, uh, yesterday, so I just want to show them off real quick. The only problem with my figure, let's take a look. One thing that's weird about him is in the show, obviously, the head has to go someplace. So in the show, this part opens up, which kind of makes sense. However, here, and his main attack in this mode was... Biting because he's an alligator. Um, nom, nom, nom. But in here, we look inside, and there's his headmaster, chilling out inside his mouth. Doesn't really make sense to me, but whatever. We'll take a look at him real quick. This is Grax, or if you follow the Japanese continuity, this is Skull Cruncher, and that's his transtector. In the U.S., he's Grax, and that's Skull Gr Skull Cruncher. On my figure, his legs are very loose, as you can see. Wobble, 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 wobble. Um, I did get a discount for that, um, and I'm going to try to find a tighter one eventually. But for right now, I don't care enough. I do care, but there's other things on my plate, so I'm not really worried about it right now. There's Grax. One thing I forgot to mention when I did Chrome Dome, the Headmaster legs are bound with a rivet at the knees. They don't separate. They do swing independently, but they are bound at the knees. So yeah, just like every other Headmaster, you fold him in half, flip his lid, and there we have his face. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. Let's take another look at Skull Cruncher. Now to transform him, he's a little, mind a little bit loose, like the head very easily separates, but it's not, I mean, I'm shaking it pretty good, it's not coming apart, it's not that big of a deal. So yeah, to transform him, first we're going to come over at the tail, pull the tail off, that's going to be his sword, because round swords hurt more, I don't know, we'll come back to that. So now we have his, him tailless. So to transform him, we split the rest of the tail in half. Thusly, just pull the legs down. Um, the feet just stay as is. The legs actually can split, so you can have him like running. Don't know why, but. At least they're not bound together, which is good. Any kind of posability we can get in G1 is appreciated. Rotate him all the way around at the waist. Uh, one other thing, when I put the repro labels on, they didn't tell me where the... There are these triangle pieces. And they didn't say where they went. They actually go in the eyes. So if you can see, it's hard to... There we go. See how there's like a white... They're colored white 
you can see underneath these aren't cut perfectly to go in there it just kind of like makes them shine but you can see the white underneath and the silvery bit is the sticker so there's that pull this around swing the arms around um, now what's weird is you can see the legs look like they're cut out so that they would fold this way see that nice cutout? but they don't you actually fold them the other way so what you want to do is hold the fist keep the fist there and then fold the I guess paw whatever you want to say claw down and then there's his fist that way kinda of weird that you have that indentation but it doesn't use it but whatevs pop the fist out fold the claw down uh, also on mine the shoulders or the elbows rather very tight. So there we have Skullgrin's Transtector fully transformed. And then for the head, let's get this good. Yeah. We'll pull down the panel. There's his meter. And we take Skull Cruncher or Grax, and you have to yell, Head on! And then you plug him in, and there's his tech specs. So he is slow as crap, but he's very strong and very smart, even though on the show he wasn't very smart. Um, you can see that this sticker is a little bit funky. That's because that's the original sticker. Um, it's not faded or anything. It just kind of doesn't fit properly. But I didn't want to go in there and risk scratching this whole up the paint the, um, the plastic on this all up to get this sticker out to replace it with the same sticker that quite frankly this one looks fine so I left that for now I kept this this sticker on the sheet so I always can redo it his face is very dark armored up his sword can go in either hand plug it in here's his gun I think his gun was supposed to be like a uh, like a nullifier or a tranquilizer gun and then he would eat them afterwards a little weird but I think that's what it was for so there's he is with this sword it looks kind of like a chainsaw sword which is cooler than it actually is because it's really not like a chainsaw so yeah there we have him all armored up in robot mode so for articulation Head goes nowhere, arms go all the way around, um, elbows bend, but these are very stiff, I don't want to bend them all the way, but they will bend. Waist rotates for the transformation, again stiff. Knees have 90 degrees individually articulated, don't know why you would need it, but this one's not as ratchety as that one. And feet are static, so it's not horrible for a G1, there's his head chilling out on the back. Ah. So yeah, I like him. I think he's pretty cool. Um, I'm interested to see what Fan Project and Toy World do with this guy in terms of updating him, because they are somebody's gonna be making him. So yeah, that's gonna be pretty cool to see him updated. Size comparison, real quick. There he is with Grind Rod. Here he is with Heart to Steel Thundercracker. So he's pretty big. Kind of bricky. But hey, it's G1. So yeah, as you can tell, I really like these guys. I really do like the Headmasters. I think it's a pretty cool gimmick. Especially for the time. Even now. You know, we don't get things like, like Headmasters. We just got data discs for Soundwave and Sound Blaster. And that's the closest thing to a cool gimmick we've had in a long time. So yeah. Um... He's expensive because he's G1. Um, I mean, if you can get this guy, you know, under 150 bucks, you know, in good. Con I only buy. I try to buy as close to mint as possible, and I only buy complete because I hate tracking down. Like finding this gun would be almost impossible to find on its own, and you would pay 20 or 30 dollars for that gun separately. 
So it's just a pain in the butt to try to track down all these parts separately. So I really try to only buy complete. So that's why you see only complete figures by me. So I really try to do that. So yeah, you. I mean, I you're gonna pay close to $110, $120 for him in pretty good condition. So it's a G1. What are you gonna do? Um, I'm gonna try to get Brainmaster soon, and I want to try to get the Headmaster, the rest of the Headmaster Juniors too. That'd be pretty cool. Um, then I'm gonna try to work on the Target Masters, but slowly but surely. So yeah, there he is. The video review for G1 Skull Cruncher.